great and made. I'm Amanda. I'm super busy at the moment and I want to apologise for any handheld scenarios like this one, little bits of shake, odd posting times and anything else that you might notice that's a bit scatty. Uh, there's a lot going on for everybody at the moment. Anyone who's in small business is really chasing their tail, but I have to say it's a lot of fun. I hope your projects are going really well. If you have projects on the go, and I know many of you have, so I wish you all the best with it. And welcome to anybody who's come along and so long to anyone who had to go away. And today I'm going to deal with the leg warmer issue. Well, it's not an issue. I've really been pressing along with it. It's really nice. There's a little issue with the wrist warmer for the other end, but I think I have a, a solution. So keep posted if you want to see what's going on. <laughs> there is the piece that I was working on. And I just want to show you if I can. I did, in the end, that little ribbon detail around. It is a blanket stitch, but I used that very slim ribbon that I was showing you. So that worked nicely. I haven't really done that before and I really like the finish. These are going to look lovely under a long skirt. Now today's project, you see those swirls actually, I'll just show you, there's the swirls of the, the running stitch that I did. And now you can keep going with those. And I just did a little bit of embroidery in each of those. I did, it's like a doodle, whatever comes to mind, and then just balance it up a little bit. So now I'm going to turn to the other end and this has brought up its own few issues. Firstly, the hole for the thumb. I have been, I've started it and I'll finish it later. I've used some of that navy around here. You can use thick embroidery thread as in the six strands of embroidery thread as well and just do the top stitch around there. It's not too much and it just strengthens that just around from there all the way around to the other side to the ribbon. You don't have to go along there because the ribbon is already strengthening that but just in the sense of it is felted, but of course, maybe the odd stitch might fray. And over time as well, you don't want it to expand too much and the wear and tear will be offset a little bit by the ribbon. So that's what I did there. Now, as you know, with the leg warmer, this part goes on the leg first. And in the end, this is going to probably pull this out too much just over time. It's already pulled it out a certain amount. And because this is felted, it's going to have a bit of give and eventually be a little bit too big for your hand. I toyed with the idea of a button, buttoning this and gathering this maybe at the cuff a little bit here, and I didn't really want it to be gaping too much like that. So in the end, this is the remedy I have decided upon. This is all the mechanics of it. <laughs> Anyhow, I have here some elasticated lace and it looks like there's a ribbon going through it. It isn't in fact it's part of it but it works. Anything elasticated would work in this case and what I intend to do is thread it through. I've decided how many holes would work so using it on this side my plan is to do it at the cuff and the cuff as in where the wrist would be and go around that with this and put a hole, cut a little hole on either side of that. So it will go in there. So on in there, out there, in there and out there. So four holes along here, starting from just inside the ribbon. Now, not too close to the other hole because you don't want it eventually to fray and then make a huge hole. So just a little hole there, a little hole there, and I'll do that with the scissors and come back to you and show you. So that's where I intend to put the holes, vertical ones, because the ribbon is going to go through there. So one, two, three, and the fourth one is on the side. And then mirror that exactly on the other side, so there'll be a hole. Just make sure there's enough space in between two of them. Just make sure that they're all equidistant, and then you can play around with the bow later. 
when you have them marked out equidistant and don't forget to make plenty of space between these two keep them pretty much in a good line then you fold it this way and just along by the pin do your little snip whoops with the scissors and you can make that little hole bigger or smaller later and you keep on going around that way and come along take out all your pins really quickly you don't have to do it really quickly but i'll do it really quickly and then going from the back of your leg warmer or wrist warmer shall we speak what i would say uh, this is the back why am i calling this back because it's the back of the leg warmer you want to go in through here because this will be the back and you want the bow to be on the side look you can decide where go, start going in from the side opposite to where you want the bow to come out so that's what i'm doing my plan is to be honest i want the bow to be here so i'm going to go in from the back here so i'm going to go in here right there that was a roundabout bit of a way so i'm going to go on one side in here and out the next hole and so forth all the way around Now you don't cut the uh, ribbon yet because you want to decide. I have plenty here, I know that. So I can decide the length of it when I get around and in and out so far. I just wanted to start behind the bow, the back of the bow. Let's say my bow is going to be here. I want the back of it to start equidistant from the bow, if you understand. So I'll go up one side and I'll proceed in and out and come out the other side and show you. So I've gone in and out through the gaps there. I'll show you how to do that. And it's about 22 inches, give or take. That's what I used. Depends on what size you want your ribbon to be or your bow to be, etc, etc. So what I did was, and what would be easy enough for you to do, would be to go in wherever you want your bow to be. Go in there and then weave it in and out until you come to the other side. And it should be even doing the numbers of holes that we did earlier. I will just tie a little bow there hanging down the way. Now that's elasticated and also you can open and close it. So you can alter that for when you're using it as a wrist warmer or for when you're having it as a legging. You can loosen it when you're using it as a legging and tighten it again for when you want to use it as a wrist warmer. My guess is you won't be using them left, right and centre. So they'll be for good wear so you won't be like but you could replace this pretty easily as well and change up the ribbon colour if you wanted. So I really like that as um, a detail. And that gives it a nice little bit of sturdiness for when you're wearing it. And then I'll move on to the decoration here now. I didn't want to start fiddling, making buttonholes. And I had a nice few buttons there to try. But I just didn't fancy the idea of having to fiddle with a button every time. You want to wear your thingies. So that seems simple enough to me. Now we'll move on to the decoration. I'll just leave that open so that we can flatten this piece nicely. That's generally it. I'm going to reflect the pattern down here, up along here, but I'm not going to make it quite as fussy, she says. I have to count that a little bit more. So my plan is. If that's on the top, my plan is probably to detail this. The bow is going to hang down somewhat. I should have left the bow in for this purpose. But, and then I want to have some detailing there. Now I'm going to doodle. So what that's going to be, I don't know. Maybe I should add a little bit of a paw print since I love animals. And I really love the little paw print emblem. It doesn't have to be that. It could be a flower. It could be anything. But we can use our applique felting idea or you can just put a few little buttons or you could do nothing. It's quite lovely as it is. I might end the ends off there with some bow, but then that might limit the movement. It'll take a little bit of thinking, a little tiny bit of detail across there or a little bunch of flowers, maybe a little bunch of flowers. I don't want to go too far from the other end because it is the same piece. So it should probably reflect the other end. 
Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure. I might do a little bit of work and then show you what I came up with. I have actually come up with a plan that didn't take long, but the pressure's off. I'm going to just do, as before, a little bubbly effect. So, not going to bring in the pet theme. I can confuse issues very easily because the head goes everywhere. And I'm going to do a little bubble theme all the way around, incorporating the colours that we have above. I'm also going to incorporate a little bit of purple because I have purple here and just the tiniest bit, now the tiniest bit at the other end because I was attempting to keep it monotone but needs must. This is what I have and so that's what I'm going to work with. Take out the colours that you had up above. I'm not going to go bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller intentionally. It'll be what it comes out as and I'll do a couple of those little sewing swirls all around to tie it all together and be a similar but slightly different pattern and hopefully that might do that for me i'll show you in a couple of minutes how i get on and then i'll carry on myself over the week <laughs> i have a little piece of violet which i am going to use to bring up the color from the central piece but it's going to be very very tiny little punctuations i don't want it to be overwhelming but I just like I always like to tie things in so these are going to be like little tiny little spots here and there and I mean that here and there just just so it's not all on its own Leo if you know what I mean now see that tiny just a little punctuation and I'll put a little bit up the other end as well in the same way just to have a nod and tie it all in. I didn't really want to make it a multicoloured <laughs> project. I was trying to keep to a kind of a narrow band. But I introduced the green and now I've introduced the green and a little tip of purple. But this is uh, how sometimes it just works out better. So I'm willing to go with that and with nothing against nothing against. Sometimes you have to just work with what you've got. So I'll do a couple more of those and I'll do a little bit of the end and I'll show you how it's coming out. And there you have it. I'll probably do some swirls here as well just to tie in the pattern and felt those little dots down a little bit more. But I kind of kept it in a little bit of a polka dot pattern, kind of enjoyable. And then I have a little tiny bit of pink in there and I did it on the other end as well. Just a tiniest little bit, little details and that was it. <laughs> I hope you like it. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed that. Get a bit of crack out of it. It's just a bit of fun. It's a really nice thing to do if you're doing it as well. I hope it's going well for you. And if you have any questions or suggestions as to what I might tackle, that would be good. If there's something you might like to know about and I'll see if I can squeeze it in. It depends on what it is as to whether I can squeeze it in before Christmas or not. But if it's something I can do or have done or anything like that, I can definitely feature it at some point. I'd probably be loving a few ideas. Now, I have ideas, but I don't know if they're related to what you want to know. And that is that's important. If it's something that you're interested in, it's going to be much more interesting for you. So, yeah, let me know. Put a little, you know, comment in there and let me see what you're thinking. So all the best with your projects anyway. And until next week, good luck. Thanks for watching.